Oh my goodness, so many flowers and so many hybrid. I am the hybrid master. <laughs> oh goodness, hey guys. <laughs> Don't worry, there is a point to this. What's going on and welcome to a quick, I say quick, I hope this is going to be quick, an explanation on how to get the blue roses in the most foolproof way possible. Good lord. <laughs> oh man, just ignore all these flowers, these aren't the important ones. So. Genetics in the game has kind of been theorized since New Leaf, and it's basically been confirmed through data mining um, that genetics are in the game now. Um, flower genetics, that is. And I'm going to show you the most foolproof way of how to get a blue rose. Now, there is a, a common known way of getting a blue rose, such as this. Okay, it's using these hybrid reds, you may have heard of them. So what you do is you breed two whites together to get a purple. Then you breed a red and a yellow together to get an orange, pretty simple. Then you breed the purple and the orange together to get a hybrid red. And people have thought for a long time that the reason why this is possible is because it contains genetics of the white, the blue, and the yellow passed down through the hybrids. And that is correct, but the thing is, a lot of people will find success using hybrid reds this way, but a lot of people won't. And that's because the purple and the orange has a 50% chance of spawning two different hybrid reds, would you believe it? Yeah, a good hybrid red and a bad hybrid red. Now you need two good hybrid reds in order to potentially spawn a blue. So if you have a good one and a bad one, it'll never spawn a blue. If you have two bad ones, it will never spawn a blue. And there's no way of finding out how or which one you have. And there's no easy way of telling. The only way of telling is that eventually if you've got two good ones, you might spawn a blue rose. Now here's the kicker. If you do have two good ones from this method, there's only a 1 in 64 chance that you'll get a blue when a new flower spawns. So it's very unlikely, and if you get a blue rose like this, you are very lucky. Probably the best thing to do is to just get put a, a red, oh sorry, put a purple and an orange down, take all the reds that come from it and put them in a big grid and hope you get some that match up. So I want to give a, a huge shout out <laughs> to, uh, who is it, it's Pale? and Eater? I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, but I'll link uh, uh, in the description a Google Doc, a uh, Google document of how the genetics work, and I'll be honest, I don't understand how they work, but they also write down the best way of getting all of the hybrids, and this has been found out through data mining and actually looking at how the genetics work in the game. And they have created a guaranteed path to get the blue rose, which is what I've tested and is what I've actually managed to do. So I believe this works, and that's what I sh want to show with you guys. Now I will say, from start to finish, um, I did do some time traveling in order to complete this. It took me about 90 in-game days and about 11 hours from start to finish to get from you know, seed bags to blue rows. So by all means, if you're doing this naturally, this is going to take you a while. And this is going to get a little bit confusing, but I'm going to try and explain the steps all the, all the way. If you want to find the written write-up, then again, link in the description. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is a nine-step process. Technically ten, because there's a test you have to do in the middle. Um, I recommend setting aside a big portion of your town in order seg to segregate each step. Um, right, so <laughs> without any further ado, let's get started. Now, the most accurate way to do this is to start with seed bags. So you're going to need some white, yellow, and some red seed bags. Um, I think I actually started with 15 whites, maybe 14, I can't remember. Um, about five or six yellows and a bunch of reds. Reds weren't that important. So step one is fairly simple. Plant down your white seed bags and water them and breed them together until you get purples. Now here's the important thing. With all of these steps, you want to discard any flowers you get that you're not going to be moving on to the next step. So you might get some whites that pop up and you think, oh, that's fine. I'll just use them to get more purples. Wrong. <laughs> so these two whites can spawn another white together that will have a different genetic makeup that might not pass down the correct genetics. So if you get anything other than purple, discard it. If you get a purple, move it on to step two. And you're going to want to do that with every single step along the way. Only move on the flowers that you get, which are correct. Discard anything else. You want to be very careful about that. Uh, and yeah, there's a 25% chance that a new flower will pop up that will be purple. So step two is fairly simple. Take the purple you got from step one and breed them with yellow seeds from a seed bag. 
Now this, whenever it produces a new flower, will always be a white flower, which is great. <laughs> Take that white flower and move on to step three. Step three is fairly simple again. You take the white from step two and you take the purples. Again, you can either get more purples from step one and use them in step three, or you can just dig up the purples from step two and just move them onto step three, it's fine. So you take the whites from step two and you take the purples that are bred from two white seed bags and you breed them together. Now, 50% of the time, you will get a white. 50% of the time, you'll get a purple. Discard the whites, keep the purples, and move on to the next step. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky because not all of these purples will be good. Half of these purples will be bad. So we need to check to see if we're getting the right ones. Moving on to step 3.5, <laughs> we need to test the purples. So again, grab the purples that spawn from step three and try and breed them with yellows from a seed bag, okay? Now, if you have a bad purple, it will always spawn a white bud. If you have a good purple, then it can spawn a white bud half the times, but it can also spawn a yellow bud. So if you breed them together and you see a yellow bud pop up, dig up this purple and move it onto step four. Okay. Now you might want to check it a couple of times because if you get a white pop up, then it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad purple. Breed it a few more times and if you always get white and you never get a yellow, get rid of this purple, it's no good. Keep doing step three to get purples and keep checking them to make sure they are a good purple. Now, here's the thing, moving them on to step four. Flowers in Animal Crossing New Horizons can now duplicate. If you water them and they're on their own and they can't breed with anything else, they can duplicate and they'll have the exact same genetic material, the genetic makeup as the parent. So you could get your good purple and you can segregate it and you can water it and it'll spawn more good purples. Or you can do it this way and you can carry on getting more. Doesn't matter, the genetic makeup is the same. What you wanna do is you wanna take two good purples, breed them together until you get a white. Now, this will uh, appear 25% of the time. These are incredibly important whites. We're gonna to refer to these the same way as the guide refers to them. These are special whites. These will be used in pretty much every step along the way to go from a one in 64 chance to a one in four chance, okay? So remember, two good purples together make a special white. Okay, it's fine. We can take a breather from that for a second. We've got the special whites that have uh, yellow, white in the correct genome and the correct genetic makeup, the correct order. Dominant recessive genes. I don't know how it works. It's been ages since I've done school. Step five is fairly simple. Get your reds uh, from, from seed bags, breed them together. You've got a chance to get black. I believe it's 25% chance to get a black. Easy peasy, take this black for step six. We go over here, <laughs> take your special whites from step four, breed them together and you will always get a red, 100% of the time. And this is the hybrid red that will guarantee the correct makeup to get a blue. So if you remember when we go back to um, to the, the hybrid red down there with the, the orange and the purple making a red, what this red one is, is the chance of getting the good hybrid red from that. So it's a couple of extra steps. It might take a few more in-game days, um, but this, these two flowers here, the special white and the red, the, or sorry, the black that we spawned uh, last step, will always create the correct hybrid red roses. You can get these, you can duplicate these, you can get more of them from here and you can put them together in a big old grid and you have a one in 64 chance of making a blue rose. Congratulations, this is the correct hybrid red. Here's the thing, in a couple of steps, we can pass on the correct genetics to make another hybrid red that will produce a blue rose one in four. So moving on to step seven, you wanna take the special whites again and breed them with the hybrid reds that we made last time and this will produce an orange rose. Now, again, when you breed the hybrid red from step uh, step six and the special white from step four, there is a one in eight chance that the flower that spawns from it will be this, this orange rose. Now, again, you can take oranges and again, you can water them and duplicate them. 
and actually breeding two of these oranges together will have a 1 in 16 chance of producing a blue rose. So instantly, one step better, four times the chance of making a blue rose. Easy peasy. But again, if you take the oranges and you breed them with a, a special white, again, the special whites we got from step four, these are very important special whites. If you can duplicate them, go for it. <laughs> you will get the money. This is the red rose. Again, it's a, I believe, 25% chance that you'll get a red rose from the orange and the special white. And this 25% chance to pop up here, this red rose is the one that will get you a blue rose one in four. Again, 25% chance. This works, okay? <laughs> Again, I spent 11 hours going from start to finish, about 90 in-game days. It's not the easiest. It's the most foolproof, guaranteed way to get a blue rose. Now there is a legitimate shortcut that I did want to mention but left it to the end of the video for a reason and that's because not everyone will be able to do this. If you're lucky enough to find orange roses on a mystery island tour, those actually have special genetics that when if you breed two of them together, they will have a 1 in 16 chance to produce a blue rose right off the bat. These orange roses also have a 1 in 8 chance to produce uh, these red roses here that give the 1 in 4 chance of a blue rose. So a fantastic shortcut, but sadly not available to everyone, but I did want to give it a mention. So I hoped that made sense. Just remember to keep the flowers separated at each step. Uh, get rid of any incorrect buds the day they spawn to prevent the flowers contaminating each other. You can, by all means, still get a blue rose from the first method I showed using orange and purples, but it took me a year and a half to do it that way in New Leaf. This method is much, much more reliable and make sure that it passes down the correct genetic code to create the blues eventually. It just takes a bit more care and patience to pull off. So again, a big thank you to the data miners and the people that figured this method out. Link in the description again to that Google document. I'm sure it'll be a huge help to others as well. Now, of course, once you get one blue rose, you can duplicate it yourself and get more super easily. It just might take a little bit of time. And if you're not up for the challenge of growing it yourself, by all means, feel free to take one from a friend if they offer it. But personally, I prefer the challenge of growing it myself, which I'll be doing in my non-time travel town. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Uh, if you're interested in more Animal Crossing New Horizons content, I do stream the game on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash dazabound every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Link in the description to that. But I also have more guides and how-tos here on YouTube, as well as a diary-style playthrough, which you can find on the screen right now. Thank you once again for watching. Hopefully your brain isn't as frazzled as mine is right now. <laughs> and I'll see you all next time.